Let's take a look at what's new in Animation Pro 1.4. Please note that this tutorial was created on an iPad Pro using Animation Pro 1.4, so your screens may look a little different. Animation Pro 1.4 brings a number of improvements to several key areas. Let's take a look. A new transform tool has been added to both the image creator and the mouth creator. This tool allows the current layer in an image to be rotated, scaled, moved or flipped etc. without having to go through a cut and paste operation first. Simply press the new transform button, make your changes and then press the green tick to apply or the red cross to abort. When adjusting an image item, it is now possible to reduce the size of the underlying image for better performance and memory utilisation. This can be done within the figure editor or from the main animation screen. Select an image item, open the item adjustment screen and press the new resample button as shown. Images brought in from other apps may often contain a lot of unnecessary blank pixels. This can make the images very large, resulting in low memory warnings and performance issues. Press the Trim Blank Pixels button to automatically remove those pixels from around an image. Alternatively, use the two dials to reduce the overall size of the image. As you can see, the Animation Pro logo in this figure can be reduced significantly in size before the changes become visually apparent. For the best performance, I recommend creating large body parts, such as a figure's torso, at a resolution somewhere below 500 by 500 pixels. Smaller body parts, such as hands and feet, should be kept to around 200 by 200 pixels or below in size. In other words, only use large images where there is an actual need to zoom right in on them. Please note that when adjusting the width and or height of the underlying image, it is possible to either maintain the original aspect ratio or not. The final button here can be used to reset the image back to its original state. Finally, whenever an image is resampled, the resampled image will be made available for later selection under the User Images Resampled category in the File Manager. For more information about memory utilisation and performance, please take a look at the Memory Management Tutorial. If a given frame only contains one figure with audio, its waveform can now be displayed simply by tapping on the figure audio icon on the film strip. Furthermore, it is now possible to play audio by tapping anywhere on its waveform the audio will commence playing from the given point in the timeline. Tap again to stop the playback. This should make it a lot easier to synchronise your animations with large audio files. Animation Pro will now display current frame information when dragging the film strip to scroll through an animation. Times will also be shown when display times has been selected from the Options menu. Now if you've ever constructed a really long animation, then you'll probably know that it can be a little difficult to locate key frames. Animation Pro 1.4 thus introduces bookmarks. Swipe down on the frames in the film strip to add or remove bookmarks. When a frame has a bookmark, a green line will be displayed as shown. To navigate to a bookmarked frame, tap on the frame details at the top of the animation screen and select the desired frame from the new bookmarks popover. You can also use this new popover to 1. Add a bookmark to the currently selected frame 2. Remove a bookmark from the currently selected frame 3. Remove all of the bookmarks from the project or 4. Individually remove bookmarks from other frames by swiping left.
Have you ever run into the situation where two or more figures have overlapping anchor points, making them difficult to choose? Well, in Animation Pro 1.4, it is now possible to select figures using the Figure Inspector. Simply press the new Select Figure button at the top of the inspector and select the figure that you wish to manipulate. Three new options have been added to the export popover. These will be enabled whenever images with transparency are to be exported. Let's take a look. 1. Do not trim. When this option is selected, the images will simply be saved at the resolution selected at the top of the export popover. Two, trim individually. Any blank pixels surrounding the figures in each frame will be automatically trimmed. This may produce images of varying sizes, depending upon the size of the figures in each frame. Three, trim to common size. Animation Pro 1.4 will examine all of the frames for blank pixels and determine the minimum image size that will satisfy them all. That is, the minimum common size that will not result in the cropping of any figures in those frames. Every now and then I receive an email from an animator asking why their videos have odd artifacts in them that don't appear during quick previews. In most cases it has been the result of tweening. Let me show you an example. Here we have a simple animation containing three frames, each containing an identical figure. Now suppose I perform an item substitution in the middle frame. In this case I'll replace the figure's hair with another image. As you can see, the new image doesn't fit his head very well, so I'll quickly perform an item adjustment to fix the problem. Now if I were to export a video containing tweens, we'd see the following. Oops, the figure's hair appears to change before the substitution, and then again after the substitution. And that occurs because of the item adjustments that I made to fix the substitution. That is, the scaling and moving that I performed were tweened from frame 1 to frame 2, and then again from frame 2 to frame 3. Now, the solution to this would have been to have turned off the tweening for the particular adjustments that I made in both frame 1 and frame 2, which has always been a little cumbersome to do. So Animation Pro 1.4 makes a couple of changes to the item adjustment screen. Firstly, I can now control the tweening between the last frame and the current, and between the current frame and the next, by selecting the appropriate button, as shown. This will save a lot of time. Furthermore, Animation Pro can now detect that you may be making adjustments as the result of an item substitution to display the following popover. Here, you can allow Animation Pro to automatically fix the potential tweening problems, ignore Animation Pro's advice, or cancel out of the popover to make any necessary changes yourself. Oh, and whilst I'm on the item adjustment screen, you'll notice that Animation Pro has an additional zoom mode switch at the top of the screen. In previous versions of Animation Pro, it was impossible to zoom in and out on a frame whilst adjusting an item, as pinching was reserved for scaling the item. By flicking this switch, it is now possible to zoom in and out. And that's it. Well, at least until Animation Pro 1.5 comes along. I hope you found that as informative as I did. Thanks for watching.